Hello everybody, and greetings from planet Earth. I am Lansoon, and I will be your host for this 10-hour playthrough of Let's Play The Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap. Um, so yeah, I, I figured I wanted to do a Zelda game. I I've been in, in kind of a Zelda mood as of late, but especially with the hype of, of The Wind Waker HD coming out, but I didn't necessarily want to play the Wind Waker HD, what? I, I have no reason to get it. I have the original. I can play the original anytime I want, and especially since this is a GameCube that I'm playing this particular game on. But I wanted to do a game similar in style to The Wind Waker, similar in, in, in the same charming quality. It's got a, a whimsical little style, and it's not cell shaded, obviously. It's all sprite based, of course. But. It's got the same kind of feel that the Wind Waker has without any of the stupid, you know, sailing around a great sea, because this is actually a very small game. It's pretty short. It's ten hours, uh, if you really stumble around. And the world's pretty small. It, it, it's short and to the point. It doesn't take too long to start up, and that's what I really like about it. I like the old-style Zelda games that do that. I think the longer the, the introductions get... I, I feel it starts to be like wading through molasses if you wait too long to get started on it. But anyways, um, I've already got a file all set up, and for some strange reason, our hero starts hatless. So let's play, everybody! A long, long time ago, in a galaxy... <clears throat> When the world was on the verge of being swallowed by shadow, the tiny pickery appeared from the sky, bringing the hero of men a sword and a golden light. With wisdom and courage, the hero drove out the darkness without a hat. When peace had been restored, the people enshrined that blade with care by slamming it into a chest. Yeah. I'm not going to go out of my way to read too much. Um, that The little narrative sequences like that I'll do, but I'm not going to do like dialogue. And Hey, Zelda! You're going to notice in this game, and you can hear it right now, that this game has a lot of sometimes versions of songs, sometimes... Uh, remixes of songs in Zelda's history. And this is, of course, the song that plays in the ending sequence of Ocarina of Time. And... Hmm. Zelda's escaped the castle! Where is Link? Hey! Link and Zelda know each other in this game at the very start! That's a nice little twist. Pickery Festival. Aww, childhood friends. Oh, you sure he wasn't late doing something else? Whatever. Still asleep. Hey, he's a responsible young man. That's fine and dandy. Time to get up, Link! It's really interesting hearing this song at the start of a Zelda game, and, and not at the end. But yes, our, our hero has a weird little hairdo. He's got bedhead going on throughout the entirety of the damn game. But, yeah, Link and Zelda are childhood friends, and Link's grandfather is... a blacksmith. Of course, he can't have any actual parents. It's got to be his grandfather or his uncle or some more distant relative than an actual parent because parent is not allowed in video games. Or if it is allowed, they must die, like, within ten minutes of gameplay. It only comes once a year. The sword for the minister. Ah, you want me to play delivery boy? Do I get tipped? Hmm. 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 The winner of the competition. Can I enter? <laughs> no, sorry. The competition's already over. 
Zelda, oh, it wouldn't be Princess Zelda without being the Princess of Hyrule. Master Smith, his name actually is Smith, so it's, it's, it's both a, a title and a name. That's interesting. Oh, thank you for unlocking the door, Zelda. You, whatever. Oh, I love the Minish Cap. It's really... It's definitely got a lot of inspiration from A Link to the Past. I mean, the same kind of presentation. It has quite a few unique items, or di different spins on items. And... I think it's a really enjoyable game for the Game Boy Advance. It's short, but then again, what GBA game isn't? It's not an RPG. And you're gonna notice some very striking similarities with this little opening sequence. The town of Hyrule! And... God, I love this song. Uh, tell me... This little intro opening sequence doesn't raise some red flags. Um, where have we seen this before? Uh, hero gets stuck escorting princess throughout uh, a fair celebrating something. This is the 100th year! This is the Centennial Festival! Not the Millennial Festival, but uh, uh, you already know that I'm referring to Chrono Trigger. Uh, this is quite close, actually. Um, yeah. We should stop it. Oh, what's over here? Yo, easily distracted princess. There's another check mark. Should name, should give her the option to be named Marla, or Marl, Mar how the fuck do you pronounce that name? Just call her Nadia. Princess Nadia, whatever. Um, Hmm. Evil creatures. But where did they go? The beasts were repelled, and not only that, but they were sealed. Every year. Hmm. Be good, children. Otherwise, you'll never see the people the size of your thumb, and if they were the size of your thumb, you'd still be able to see them. It only comes once every year, so we'd best enjoy it, because the festival, she will be over soon. It's not, like, everlasting like the Millennial Fair is in Chrono Trigger. The victor was a mysterious man dressed entirely in black. Oh no! The victor was Ganondorf! Uh, we can already see how this is going. Hmm... All manner of vegetables. You're a produce seller, that's nice. Oh, how do you know that the pickery are real if you've never seen one? Hmm. The 100th year. So, this is going to bring with it Minish, or I'm sorry, pickery coming. Yeah, well, who are you? Please do not put them into verse. I, I don't care so much for your poetry. Uh, it's already been done! Ganondorf won it! <laughs> A man dressed entirely in black. Oh, who else could it possibly be? Surely this game would be, you know, safe and, and recycle same villain that we all know and hate and sometimes love and whatever. Ah, uh, Zelda. Easily distracted. Wait, what? So, y you noticed that she was Princess Zelda after you gave her the drawing number and announced her as... Oh, okay, whatever. <laughs> Ooh, a heart container! Take the- Oh! A giant rupee worth 200 rupees! Take that! Or 
a shield that you can buy for 50 rupees. Take the gigantic fucking rupee. Take it. Don't, no, don't take it. You can buy that with the... Oh. E even the shopkeeper says that you're making a stupid mistake, Zelda. Don't take that. Take the rupee. Buy, the, buy yourself a shield and please. Uh, tomboyish to the very end. Wait, what? Aww! It suits me perfectly, I just need a sword to go with it. Too bad I can't shoplift Ganondorf's soon-to-be sword. Hmm. Yes! Because that's not ours, that belongs to the winner of the tournament, who is totally not evil. And you're gonna notice, uh, like most Zelda games, there are gonna be characters that are like blatant rip-offs, well, blatant incarnations of characters in Zelda's past. This is, is his name Zill? Dill or Zill or something like that. He's from the Wind Waker. He's the one with the gigantic booger hanging from his nose. That's nice and charming. Yeah. But here we have Tentacool and Somebody not quite as convincingly dressed as Tentacool. Yeah, yeah. Tell me that's not Tentacool. Tell me you don't get a Tentacool vibe at it. Well, I guess, whatever. I guess that's the hair. Whatever, you people are very strange. A long way, hmm? Nope, nobody's ever seen them. They don't exist. Sorry. There are fairy tales that are not true, just like magic and villains. All not true. Well, now Zelda wants to go ahead. Hey! Nice shot! Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, maybe I should... The business scrub. Defend ourselves. Well, it just so happens that I have a shield that you gave me. Thanks, Zelda! Oh, you got polite all of a sudden. Oh, you spit nuts when you speak. Well, why don't you speak as you're spitting nuts? Your text box... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm breaking the fourth wall. Whatever. Uh, of course they got scared and they ran away. You were spitting at them. It's like if I sit here and I... Pff, every five seconds and I... Pff, keep doing this throughout the entire... Pff, let's play. You see? It gets kind of old after a while. Yeah, you go away. Okay, so, got four interestingly shaped trees. Well, not interestingly shaped, but interestingly positioned. Into the castle we go! And, it's really nice to be able to roll in this game. Like, you, you, you don't even have to wait until you get, well, Pegasus boots, but that's not much of a spoiler, I guess. Uh, but, yeah. It, it, it kind of feels like a hybrid, so to speak, between like A Link to the Past and, you know, more recent Zelda games. The narrative is certainly stronger than it is in just A Link to the Past. Bring forth... The Pickery Blade and the bound chest. It seems like a great insurance policy to have that and be able to have whoever wins the tournament to be able to touch that and not have any nefarious intentions whatsoever. It's a sacred honor. Hey! It's the King of Hyrule, Zelda's father. Take bets on uh, how long you imagine he's going to still stay alive. Um, the awards... Vadi? Who is this Vadi? Who the, where, where's Ganondorf? Where's our Ganondorf villain? I wouldn't call it black so much as I would really, really dark navy blue, but maybe that's just the lighting <laughs> style of the game. Yes, face the camera and tell us all what you are going to do. Huh. <sighs> 
gotta be honest, I actually liked Vadi. <laughs> For all of the secondary villains that Nintendo has given the Zelda series, the only ones I really consider to be really menacing villains besides Ganondorf are Vadi, uh, Varen, and Anox. That's it. I mean, all of the one-off villains that they have in these in these games sometimes, like even Girahim, I didn't get, I, I didn't get that kind of a vibe from Girahim. And yeah, you might want to look at the warranty on that sword, because uh, yeah. Let the monsters come out and play, I guess. And oh, please, Zelda. Run. The Mystic Aura. Huh. So, he acknowledges that she has power in her veins, but he's looking for something in that chest, like, to stone! Maybe you should have invested in a mirror shield, Zelda. You see, you're done in by your own freaking faulty choice. You could have you could have used that giant rupee to buy a mirror shield and then the game would be over whatever There is no power in that chest you fool Hmm the force the triforce not quite <laughs> There's no rush Vadi you, you totally didn't get an entire kingdom of soldiers sicked on you because you turned the princess to stone and terrorized the nation. A terrorist! Body, you're a terrorist! Oh boy. So... Huh. This is not good. Hey, at least they moved Zelda. That's nice of them. All right. Yes. But the blade's broken. Unfortunately. Um not a damn thing. They most certainly exist. How can you be so sure? Because y you can't have actually seen them. You know of them, but y y whatever. Anyone but children, really? Is this game actually giving a logical reason, well, within the game's uh, canon, as to why they would send a child as, to, as opposed to Chuck Norris or Steven Seagal, the soldier? I, w really? This is nice. I like this. Oh, uh, the monsters have been freed. So this is the origin of monsters in Hyrule. Kind of. This is this game's origin for monsters in Hyrule. The broken blade! That's not gonna work as a sword. But that will! I totally snatched Vadi's prize sword. Who's the sucker now? Deepwood Shrine. Hmm. Ooh, a map! Yes! A useful map! Now you'll never get lost! Isn't that nice of- and... Admittedly, Hyrule is not very big in this game. I mean, this is no... Uh, a Link to the Past. I think it's probably about half as big. But the areas all have a great deal of substance in themselves, so... It, it's not gonna be like Oracles, where every square is just like one little screen. There, there's some decently sized areas, but it's still a short 10 hour experience the first time you play it, so it is what it is. Only you can break Vati's curse and prevent forest fires and free Princess Zelda. 
So, off I go! Into the wild blue yonder, still without a hat. Boy, don't I feel foolish. Nice of them, they, they have the Triforce decorating the place, but... Hmm. I'll get into that later. Uh, this game actually doesn't uh, represent the Triforce at all. I mean, unless they're going to go with uh, the Light Force that they mentioned at the start of the game. But they also mention the Triumph Forks, and this goes into timeline stuff. This is micro-information that you really don't need to enjoy the game. But whatever! Off I go, still without a hat. This is going to be an interesting little journey. Whoa! Hello, guys. What are you guys repairing? Muto! I know you. Hmm. 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 Well, there's only one way to go, then. Hey, Lon Lon Ranch! Well, ain't this a surprise. You got... I, I'm not really familiar with uh, what enemies' names are, and I never have been with Metroid either, so... It's always amused me when people... get, uh, really picky about what enemies are called. I mean, some enemies I know, like, I know that's Nakarok. I mean, that's basic. Almost every Zelda fan knows that's Nakarok, probably, because Navi told me a gajillion times. But... Like, those little mole enemies that look like they came straight out of Despicable Me, I, I, I don't know. And I don't really care to know. But we have quite an adventure ahead of us. We have to finish Vadi off. And not let him appear in any future Zelda games. Finish him off while this is his first appearance in the series. Do not make the same mistake you made with Ganondorf game. Anyways, I will see you guys next time on Let's Play The Legend of Zelda, The Minish Cap, where I venture into the Minish Woods and hopefully find the Deepwood Shrine and our first dungeon of the game. Have a good day, everybody!